Hey, what's happening, guys? Thanks for joining me today. Today is September 26th, 2021, and it is the day after my mom passed away. And I wanted to thank you all for your support and your thoughts and feelings and prayers, and it just means a lot to me. But thank you, and now we're going to move on because the world moves on and you got to keep going. So today, we are going to talk about ground. What is ground? And what are these symbols? Earth ground, chassis ground. Maybe you've never heard of it called a generic ground. That's what I call it. An analog ground and a digital ground. What is it? What's it mean? Well, first of all, this is my interpretation of ground. It is maybe not exactly what you are going to find in a textbook. But I'm going to get the point across to you so that you understand what I'm talking about. Ground is the reference point in a circuit from which, and this is important, all Electrical potential is measured. That is a very good explanation of ground. And now, thank you for joining me. That's all I have for today. I'm just kidding, of course. It is a reference point in a circuit from which all potential is measured. Well, what do I mean by that? I'm going to tell you. Relax. All right. I guess we've moved on to potential because we need to explain that as well. That's not hard. Potential is the difference in voltages between two points. Point A, point B. If point A is at 5 volts DC and point B is at 12 volts DC, your potential in this circuit is 7 volts DC. Now, if we have another circuit, point C and point D and point C is at 0 volts DC and point D is at 7 volts DC your potential in this circuit is 7 volts DC you see what I'm saying here these two circuits have the same potential even though they're not at the same starting point. And this is why I always say to connect your grounds first. It's very important. All right, our first ground we are going to talk about is the earth ground. And you will see this symbol. This is the earth ground symbol, which is a symbol that I use in almost all of my schematics to represent ground. Is it proper for all the schematics? No. But when you see that symbol, you know that's ground. And I just use it as a generic. So earth ground. Here we have AC coming in. There's live and neutral going to a transformer, going to some piece of equipment. And then we have an earth ground, which is connecting the equipment to ground. What that does is that provides an easy path for the current to get to ground if there is a leakage from the circuit to the case. Why do we do that? Because you yourself are an easy path to ground and it is much better that it goes through a ground connection to the ground than through you because you are not made to pass current. You might not survive such an event. 
That's earth ground. Our next contestant today is the chassis ground. That is this symbol here. And you see it here in the schematic, the chassis ground is your common ground where all points of the circuit are connected to the chassis of the equipment or, you know, the PCB, whatever. They're all connected together. And the reason for that is so that we have that reference point for the potential. So here you see we have an electric motor. Let's say this is a 24 volt DC battery. And this is a 470K resistor. Make this a, uh, an LED. That's its current limiting resistor. With that chassis ground, we can read the potential from this zero point, which is also the zero point of this battery, the zero point of this diode, the zero point of that motor. They are all coming from the same point of zero. That is our reference. Next up, we have the generic ground. I hope I spelled that right. Spelling was never my strong suit. So here we have a circuit where I actually forgot to put in voltage there. We have a PNP transistor switching in. That's an LED. I'm sorry. My green marker kind of went wiggly there. We have a PNP switching an LED on. And that PNP is being controlled by an MPN. This is a standard PNP, NPN uh, switching circuit. And it has generic ground points to give you just a reference to measure your potential in each of these legs of the circuit from. The reason we use a generic ground here and not a chassis ground is because these might not be grounded to the chassis. These might be on a PC board. These are just the reference points. That's your generic ground. All right, finally we get to our analog and digital grounds. And they are just the little triangle symbols with an A and a D in them. Now here is a somewhat convoluted circuit, but we have basically two parts to this circuit and they are separated here, okay? Actually, this should go like this. So we have an analog part of the circuit coming in here. We have some sort of signal being input into an op amp, going through the op amp into an Arduino with a GPIO triggering an LED to ground. Now over here on the analog side, we have all of our ground points marked with an A. Over here on the digital side, we have our ground points marked with a D. And at some point, we will connect them so that we have a single ground. But if you're drawing up a, a more complicated analog and digital circuit, you do want to keep your analog and digital grounds separate. For instance, um, if you were, say, building a guitar amplifier, you would also want to keep your high-voltage tube driving uh, B+. Plus separate from your signals it can get very difficult but basically you're trying to avoid ground loops and things like that but you're separating your analog and your digital and at some point in this circuit we are also going to end up with our analog and digital grounds either chassis grounded or even more possibly earth grounded but those are the types of grounds i'm sure i missed one or two and i'm sure somebody will tell me about it if you have questions put them below and i will try and answer them again thank you for all your support if you like this video i hope you'll give me a thumbs up feel free to comment share and don't forget to subscribe big thanks to all the patrons and a big thanks to you for watching that's it i'm out peace